Some of the most famous investors in the whole world have made millions of dollars by following this one simple strategy. This strategy consists of first determining the intrinsic value of a stock, then waiting for the price of the stock to drop below its intrinsic value, then purchasing the stock and then just waiting it out. It seems extremely simple, right? However, this strategy has two main issues and we will explain them using the graph of Adobe stock right here. It shows the price of the stock and the intrinsic value of the stock as the dotted blue line. You can see that there have been few moments where the stock has actually converged down to the intrinsic value, but it always comes back down. The first difficulty is actually being able to correctly calculate the intrinsic value. Why is this? Well, this is because I believe it's very subjective. It's very hard to correctly estimate growth projections, and it's also very hard to estimate the discount factor. The second difficult thing is actually waiting for the stock to either fall below the intrinsic price or just waiting for the stock to pick back up after you have bought it. So for this to work, you must be very convinced that the way you are doing it is actually correct. Today, we're going to see how to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock and who can be better at explaining how to calculate the value of a stock than Monish Pabrai, sometimes referred to as the master of value investing by cloning Warren Buffett's strategy. He has the ability to generate significant returns for his investors by employing a disciplined and focused value investing strategy. And why do I say that he was cloning Mr. Buffett's strategy? Well, this is because in a lot of his interviews, he constantly refers to Warren Buffett's principles, which he used to base his strategies on. These principles can be found in his books, in his interviews, and even in private conversations that they had. So he does give a lot of merit to him. Now, from 2000 to 2018, his hedge fund achieved an extraordinary return of 1,200%, which is a lot better than the S&P, which returned 160% in that in the same time period. But what are Monish Parai's strengths and why is he able to achieve these insane returns over time? Well, the first one is the cloning success. He is able to understand what other people are doing better, gather their principles and what has worked for others, and replicating their success in his own portfolio. And I do believe that this is an insane strategy because a lot of people will just copy completely the strategies and that doesn't work because if you want to clone the success, you have to give them your own personal touch because not everything works the same for everyone. Additionally, he focused on the long term. He constantly disregards short term fluctuations and he solely focuses on the fundamentals of companies, sectors and everything else. He follows a very concentrated strategy, meaning that he only buys very few number of firms which are very thoroughly researched positions. For example, I believe that right now in his portfolio, he only has three stocks and the three stocks are in the same industry. Now, for the capital allocation, he is not afraid to sit on cash for months and for years if he believes that there are no suitable investments available. And I think this is a huge mistake that we all make because we believe that we should have money working for us 24-7 when in reality, you should focus on the quality of the investments that you're able to obtain. So we should not be afraid to sit on cash if we don't believe that there are any investments at an attractive valuation. And he is a great believer of having a wide margin of safety. He believes that the intrinsic value of a business should always be higher than its market price whenever you are going to purchase the asset. The first method he uses for valuation is a simple one. It's called relative valuation and it's a way of measuring how expensive your company is in relation to its peers. So the first metrics you will need from your company is to find the company's current P ratio and the current yearly earnings. From there, you will estimate more or less what a usual PE ratio for this company in its industry will be around, which is usually around the 15 to 20 PE ratio in a normal economic environment, with growth companies, of course, demanding a higher PE ratio. Right now, we can see that the stock market is really high in terms of PE ratios, so it's tougher to find attractive companies based on this. Next, you want to estimate the growth rate or find the historical growth rate of your business versus the historical GDP growth rate. So how much does the growth rate of your business outpace the GDP? We're going to be using the example that it grows at two times the GDP. And then find, of course, the estimate growth for the GDP of the USA or the country where you want to invest. In the USA for the next year, the estimate for growth is 2.8%. So if your company grows at two times the GDP, the estimated growth rate for your company will be around 6%. Then you want to estimate the future value of your companies using PE ratio range. What does this mean? Well, you want to say 
what the future value will be if your company has a PE ratio of 15, of 20, and 25, a conservative, a normal, and an optimistic ranges. And then calculate the possible yearly return and see if that is acceptable for you for the three scenarios. The method number two is just creating a discounted cash flow. This, of course, is a more accurate method. It's a harder method to use as well. First, you will need some data inputs, the first one being the current market cap, and the second will be in the current free cash flow. Because as we say in this channel, free cash flow is everything for the investor. Second, you should take a look at the excess assets that the company holds right now, which are assets that could be sold without hurting the operations. For example, one could be having excess cash reserves. If a company accumulates a significant amount of cash and doesn't have immediate plans for investment or expansion, it could be considered excess. Also, we could consider excess assets unused real estate, unused equipment, small investment holdings, or even inventory surplus. You should identify them as long as they can be sold without hurting the operation. The third one is that you should actually either forecast the growth for yourself or look at analyst estimates. It is generally better for you to forecast the growth of the companies or one thing you can do is look at the estimates and then see if you agree with them or not. For me, I generally like to stay on the conservative side just in case something goes wrong. I've already added my own margin of safety before even calculating the interesting value. Number four is that you should discount the cash flows and even calculate the sales price in year 11, which is when in theory you will sell the asset. Fifth, you should add the excess assets to the free cash flows and then you have your whole enterprise value. By dividing this value by the shares, by the number of shares outstanding, you will calculate the intrinsic value of the company. This is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just portraying what Monish Prabhai's strategy has been and how he generally calculates the value of different companies. And then I have three tips for you in order to conduct an effective valuation strategy. The first one is that you should be conservative. You never know what risks a company may hold and it's generally better to underestimate the value of a company than to overestimate the value of a company. Second one is that, which goes hand in hand with this point, is that you should have a margin of safety. Monish Pabrai is very generous with this and he is a clear believer of the margin of safety. He actually says in some interviews that the margin of safety most commonly used by him is around 40 to 50 percent which is really huge but this will give then give you the value at which you must buy the stock for you to be safe and have a great deal and the third one is to just be patient and stay focused it will be hard for companies to go down to your intrinsic value calculation and it will be tough in sometimes when you have bought a stock and it keeps going down you just must stay focused and believe in yourself Thank you for watching. This has been the Cashflow Compounder. As always, join the free Patreon for extra content. And there is a link in bio for a free stock if you join Trade Republic or Trading212.